What is up my NeoVim friends? Today we're going to talk about setting up NeoVim for Java development. So I'm going to go through a couple of different options and give you a couple links. So check out the description if you want to learn more. And if you want to see an article, I usually do articles for all the different videos. So check that out if you want to see it in written form. Essentially the crux of what we're going to be setting up today is setting up JDTLS. And this can be done in a couple different ways. And so I'll show you a option that is easy to use and an option that is really simple to use. Pay attention and watch both and let me know in the comments which one that you're gonna go with. Let's start off with what are the things that we need in our editor to be able to be productive with Java development. And some of those things are smart code completion, getting diagnostics, having a hover so you can see function definitions and how to use the language in different ways, document symbols, looking up different definitions and references in your code base, and then auto imports because who really knows all the imports for Java? If you happen to be using the coc.invim plugin, then I'm gonna show you this video and have a link down in the description from Chris at Machine. And he has a video from several years ago that would be useful for you. I think most people have gone towards using the built-in LSP client in NeoVim. And so I'm gonna show you a couple options with that. But if you're using coc invim, check out this video. All right, before we get started, Let's create a Java project and kind of have a baseline of what functionality we have in place. And right now I'm just using a base clone of kickstart.invim. And if you haven't seen it before, then I have this alias, if I can spell alias right, of this kvim. And you can use this invim app name and run multiple distros or configurations of NeoVim. So I'm gonna start with a base configuration here. And what we're gonna do is use Gradle in it. And before we jump into this, I just want to show you that I use SDK man. And if we have current here, these are the versions that I currently have set up. So Gradle 8.6, Java 17, and then I have Kotlin installed from a previous video. If you don't have a Java version and Gradle set up, then use SDK man. It's awesome. And have at least some version set up on your machine before doing this. All right, let's clear this client. Now that you have Gradle installed and set up on your machine, Let's make a new directory. We'll call it example project and we'll go into there. Gradle init. New application. And we'll do Java. No multiple sub projects. Uh, I use Groovy most of the time because I'm more familiar with it. And then we'll use Jupyter uh, for our testing framework. All right, default looks good. And the default that we just saw earlier with 17, that works fine. If you have 21 installed, that should be just fine as well. Success. Now we should see something that looks like this inside of our project. Great. Now, if we open this up using our KVM here, then we can search for our different file and we'll go into app.java. And we should have something that automatically gets installed with tree sitter. So you should have a little bit of syntax highlighting from tree sitter for Java. But if we go to the end here and we try to go to definition, then we don't really see the right thing happening. Like we can open up our other test here and go down to this, go to definition and nothing really happens. So we do this, we try to go to references, GR and GD and nothing happens. So, this is our baseline and let's configure JDTLS to allow the LSP to work correctly. Something else you may notice is if you do LSP info, then you should not see any clients connected to the buffer. So check this and we will see this change once we implement the LSP. All right, now let's configure NeoVim. Let's open up our NeoVim installation and we'll search and we'll go to our init Lua, which is gonna be our main file for where everything is set up and installed. You may see something on the bottom right for the Lua LS. And let's go to tree sitter. And we should see a number of grammars that get set up here. And we probably saw Java get set up already, but let's explicitly call that out, save that. And then there should be another section. We could set up our servers down here in the bottom where we're setting up all these servers. And we could set uh, JDTLS here, which I think works out of the box. But what I'm, I'm preferring to do is not to add this here and instead open up Mason and install this manually. So if we look for JDTLS, then we can hit I and go back up to the top. 
and see that it downloads and installs correctly. We see that set up and we have it ready to go. You will need to have this before we have the other pieces, which is this repo here in VimJD TLS. Now let's close this and we'll go back up to where we're installing our plugins. So if we look for plugins and this spot looks fine, we will toss this in here and add this. So this is our connector code that we will use to connect JDTLS and spin up the language server for us. So let's save this. And from this point, let's go into EX, which is NetRW, and we need a new directory. So we're gonna create a new directory, FT plugin, and this is gonna run against specific file types. And so this is gonna have some configuration only for Java files. So if we go in here, then we're gonna create a new file called Java Lua. And in here, we're gonna paste in the config from the installation page. And it looks something like this. Now this path is not correct. And so we're gonna swap it out for where our Mason path is. And in here, we're gonna have to do a vim.function.expand to get the full path. And then we'll do our local here and kickstart, which is our installation that we're using. Mason, bin, and JDTLS. Once you have this set up, then we can go back to our Java project and see how it works. Back over here in Java land, we'll open up our kickstart, go to app.java, and then down here, we should see our language server getting installed and set up, which is exciting. So once this gets spun up, then we should be able to go to one of these functions here and then we'll wait for it to run through all the synchronization and setup. I think we're good at this point. So if we do a GD, then it jumps to this definition. If we do a GR, then we should see that we get a list of definitions we can go to, which is awesome. If we go here, then we can do our class under test here and do a get reading and this auto completion works and we have everything set up for our LSP and connecting to JDTLS. Now, like I mentioned previously, if you want other things like Lombok to be incorporated into your project, then we're gonna have to do a couple more advanced configurations. So let's go to our build.gradle and in our build.gradle down here, we will paste in some Lombok configuration where we're gonna get the annotation processor and then also have the other side for our tests. So once we have this, we can install it and we'll do a Gradle clean build. This will run, run all our tests, make sure nothing's broken. And then we can jump over to our app.java file. All right, now we can do a getter. We should see Lombok. And if we do a private string name, then we should see that this doesn't get resolved. We don't see any auto completion here for that get name. So let's go fix that in our configuration. Back over here inside of our java.lua file, we are going to replace this configuration with configuration that looks like this. And I will leave a link to this in the description. So check out this. Don't feel like you have to copy all this down right now. Real important piece is this Lombok line right here. And essentially this needs to be in your packages JDTLS. This should auto install and have other packages included in it, which is why we went through Mason and getting all these other side things that are gonna get installed. So double check that this gets installed correctly or this will not work. So double check that. Now from the top, we're gonna set our home directory and then we're gonna set the JDTLS workspace where all of our files are gonna get stored for JDTLS like saving things. And if you have multiple projects, there will be multiple projects inside of here. And then basically we're turning on some extended capabilities using some Chris at machine things where we check that something gets installed and we do a private call. We're basically building up the command. So we start with Java and if you wanna tweak this or you have questions, then this is all covered on the GitHub page. So check out the docs here for JDTLS in Vim, and it will answer a lot of these questions. It goes through more detail about what is going on here. If you're on a Linux machine, then you're gonna want to change this to Linux and, in, and not use Mac. So that's probably obvious, but 
you will need to do that as well. And then some of this is, again, setting up some extended capabilities. It's not super thorough, but this should get you off the ground and running and have Lombok set up in our installation. So let's save this file and let's go back over to our Java project. After updating our config and restarting NeoVim, now we can go back over to app.java here and we still have our getter. If we try and do a go to definition after our server boots up, let's see what happens. So if we do a GD, we do see this going to definition, which is awesome. And then if we try and do get name, then we see that auto completing, which is awesome. So we can see this auto complete here. And if we save it, then we should be good. Awesome. Something that I ran into whenever I was messing with Lombok is that it would not detect some of the ad accessors. So that at getter that we were looking at, that seemed to not work for some reason. Like it would give me an error. And so what I found is in looking through this, somebody had a similar issue with the other plugin in Vim Java, and they ended up installing the nightly build here at the bottom. And they replaced what was in their JDTLS with the nightly, which is over here. So you can just download this and swap it into this directory. And that might resolve your issue. Just a heads up if you run into that yourself. Before we move on, there's a few other key maps I wanted to show you first. So this is a few of the features of JDTLS and some of the extra benefits that you get from using it. You can organize your inputs, extract variables, extract constants, and extract methods. I will make sure this is in the config so you can use it yourself. This is some other things that you can use and feel free to change the key mappings so that it makes some more sense to you. But if we go back over to our Java project, then we should be able to use some of these. So if we do leader, and C, R, and V to extract a variable. Then we'll see that happen here, and we can type ASDF and name it whatever we need it to be. If we needed to organize our imports, let's say that we don't have this one, then we can do a leader and C, O to organize, and it'll import that right away. All right, so we have everything set up in our Kickstart in Vim, but we don't quite have our tests working, and we don't quite have a debug adapter. Now, there's a couple other plugins that we can bring in and configure, and I'll do that in a separate video, but there is an easier option. This other plugin, InVim Java, will let you set up all of the things we just did, plus the tests and the debug adapter all in one plugin. Yep, that's right, one plugin, pretty sweet. Now, this is geared towards people who don't need a lot of customization, and so if you need to open the can of worms up and get in there and dig around, then, Go with the first option. Otherwise, if you need something up and running quickly, you might consider this one. I'll show you how to configure that right now. So if we go to our init Lua and we go down to our plugins, then we can pick a spot here that looks nice and pretty. And we'll paste in the example config and we don't need the return. If you wanna split this out to its own file, then you would need the return. I'm just doing it inline for ease of coverage here. Now we have this installed, but we want to configure it. So we need to go down here to where we're doing our Mason config. Now down here, we're going to do a require and Java, and then we'll call setup. And then we need another function require and LSP config. And this is going to then call the JDTLS setup. And if you need any specific options, you can put them in here. We save it. Then once we reopen our NeoVim instance, we should see everything install right away. Let's do that. Quit, reopen it. And we see all of that dependencies getting automatically installed, all the debug adapter, the JDTLS and open JDK, all those things and a Lombok nightly set up and ready to go. Now over here in our example project, we can open up our NeoVim instance and go to app.java. And unfortunately for me, this is where the road ends. And so I have a problem with the client not starting up. I'm still working on exactly what is wrong, but right now this doesn't work for me. So if you have any pro tips or other things that you've gotten working with in Vim Java, leave them in the comments. This seems like a great option. It just isn't working for me right now.
Hopefully this has helped you get up and running with Java and have a couple of options for configuring Java development inside of NeoVim. Thanks again for watching. And if you enjoyed the video, give it a like and consider subscribing and I will see you in the next video. Thanks everybody.